Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, we'll wait a few minutes for others to join and then we'll start. Okay, so guys, uh, yeah, so today we are going to start uh, a new chapter of metallurgy. Okay, so like we'll finish this chapter today itself. Okay, we don't have uh, much to study. One class, four hours is enough, uh, you know, for this topic. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at the importance, uh, I did not uh, check Aditya LC. Okay. <clears throat> Aditya, Aditya just dropped me a hi. Okay, Aditya C. Yes, sir. On WhatsApp, yeah. Okay, so like if you see this uh, uh, particular chapter, uh, I think uh, from the board slippers also they have removed for this year, right? And uh, as far as competitive exam is concerned, uh, this chapter is not that important, especially for JE. Okay, for other exams like BITSAT, CET, they ask few, you know, um, theoretical questions on this. They are not any numericals you are going to get in this particular chapter. So it's basically theory, uh, theory. You have methods, you know, process by which we can extract metal from its ore, correct? So metallurgy is all about extraction. Extraction of metals like copper, zinc, iron, aluminum, right? How do we extract uh, metals from its ore? Um, you know, um, what is the property of uh, the ore of the given metal? And based on the property, we choose various processes. Okay. So what are those processes? Right. Based on property, how do we choose the processes for the extraction of a particular metal? That is what we are going to see. Okay. So basically, if you look at this, all this stuff, you need to know the properties based on the properties we'll have the uh, purification of metals. Correct. So <clears throat> if you look at, uh, these elements or metals that we have in earth crust, they're available in combined state, right? If you look at elements, elements in earth crust, they occurs in or exist in combined state, correct? Element occurs or exist in in combined state. So basically, you know, all these elements, metals, whatever you say, okay, they react easily with oxygen, for example, you say that they can react with moisture, they can react with other chemical elements also, and exist in the form of, in the form of what? In the form of compounds. We haven't, no, DNF block, we've done, no, what, what is the last portion we have done? DNF block? So we were just doing zinc sulfate then, sir. All right, so it's done. I think few compounds are there, just one or two, three compounds are there. If you look at the you know chapter, there are so many compounds given, okay? So most important one we have done, and I said last class that other compounds you can go through on your own. There's okay, nothing yes. much to left. Okay, so yes, that was my understanding. Hence, I'm starting this particular chapter. If you want, if you have any doubt, we can do that later on. Let's continue with this. Yes, yes, yes. NT is, NCRT is more than enough that you can go through. So I think we are done with um, DNF block. There are so many compounds if you look at the books, right? 
but all those compounds are not important. Important one we have discussed. You need to focus on NCRT for these chapters. Okay, not more than that. Yeah, Viva? Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, yeah. So that is what I was talking about. Elements. Um, so in this chapter, again, I'm repeating. In this chapter, we are going to study about the extraction process of metals. Correct? That's the basic thing we have. Only one particular uh, you know, thing is important for JE point of view. That is Ellingham diagram. Okay. Ellingham diagram is important for board also. But since this year, you don't have this chapter in board syllabus. So that is also gone, right? But for JE point of view, Ellingham diagram, properties, what all information we can extract from Ellingham diagram, that you need to focus on. Okay. All other things are not that important for JE. Okay. So, yes, so element occurs or exists in combined state. All these elements, like under different, different conditions, they may combine with oxygen, moisture, or other chemical reagents and occurs in combined state. Right, for example, you see, non-metals mostly exist in the reduced form, okay? So I'll write down here. Non-metal, for example, you see, Non-metals exist in exist in reduced form. Okay, reduced form means what? For example, if I take the example of halogens, they exist in the form of X minus Cl minus Br minus I minus etc. Reduced form they exist in the form of halides. Okay, metals which we are going to focus on in this chapter, metals are no, they re they are reactive towards oxygen. So they generally exist in the form of oxides, okay? So metals, metals exist in the form of oxides. For example, you see, we have Al2O3, aluminum oxide, alumina we call it as, Iron oxide is Fe2O3, etc. So our job is to extract these metals like aluminum from its oxide, iron from its oxide. It's not necessary that we'll always extract metals from its oxides only. Which compound we are going to choose for the extraction of metals, that depends upon several, uh, you know, several conditions we have for that. Like, suppose you need to extract aluminum, correct? So we have aluminum ka different, different compounds, correct? So if you take one particular compound, yes, right, Rankin, right? If you take one particular compound, you need to think of the convenience of the process that we are going to use to extract the metal. So the process must be convenient and economical for the extraction of metal. There's no any point of extracting a metal and you are putting so much of money behind it, right? Because eventually you have to make profit out of it, correct? So we, we choose those compounds only from which we can extract metal conveniently and economically, right? So among all those compounds of one particular metal, those compounds that we choose for the extraction of metals, we call it as ores, right? And all these compounds, like I'm, I've written over here, the elements which occurs in combined state. So the compound that we have, those compounds, we call it as minerals, okay? So whatever the compounds we have for any given metal, all those compounds belongs to the category of mineral. Among those compounds, one particular compound that we use for the extraction of metal, we call it as ores correct so all ores are minerals but all minerals are not ores okay i hope you understand it the two points we have over here uh, we first of all you write down the definition of minerals minerals write down compounds of metals which are Compounds of metals which are 
naturally available naturally available naturally available in earth's crust in earth's crust and can be obtained by mining can be obtained by by mining called minerals right next definition we have that is ore definition write down these are the minerals from which these are the minerals from which from which a metal can be a metal can be extracted extracted economically extracted economically and conveniently conveniently are called ores so basically minimum input maximum output okay in the most <coughs> excuse me economical way correct so one last point after this you add all minerals are ores but all ores are not minerals vice versa is not true done yeah okay example you see yeah example is suppose fes2 it is a compound of iron we call it as iron pyrite like this you will get many compounds over here in this chapter for which you need to memorize the formula plus name okay because not in je sometimes in neat and sometimes in other you know regional exams like bitsat and others they ask you know questions on this just a second yeah fes2 we have iron pyrites is a mineral okay we don't use iron pyrite for the extraction of uh, iron right is a mineral uh, not an ore why because fes2 the extraction of iron it requires high cost of production okay so it is an ore it is not a mineral okay we have one more term over here which we call it as gang gang are what gang are basically the impurities okay these are the impurities present in the ore
present in the food. We call it as gang. So these are some basic definitions we have that you uh, need to memorize. Not much important, by the way. Just you need to know that what is mindal, what is food, what is the difference. Okay. So what we are going to do here, uh, next, you know, we are going to understand the various processes that we use for the extraction of any metal. In general, we discuss. It's not like we are going to do one specific metal. Okay, that, that is what we are going to do. We'll do in the last one or two metals we'll do. But the process that we are going to use, whatever metal we have, more or less, we are going to have all those processes only that we are going to see next, correct? So we'll discuss the process first. What is the overall process we have? And how do we extract in given steps? What are different different you know methods we take for the separation of uh, you know metals from impurities? Okay, based on the properties of the metal and impurities, right? We use one particular methods for the separation of uh, what we say metal. Correct. So we'll discuss some general methods in different different steps, and those methods only. We, we were, you know, we will be using for the extraction of a given particular metal. One or two steps may be different here and there, but more or less the concept will be that only. But before going into um, the, you know, the methods or the process we have for extraction of any metal, we will discuss, we'll see some compounds and its molecular formula. Like I said, you need to know some compounds and their molecular formula. I'll write down a few compounds here. You also copy it down and you have to memorize it. Okay, it is important. Like I said, not for JE, but other exams, they ask these questions directly. Okay, so some examples of uh, no uh, compounds you write down here. Like the first one we have, uh, heading you write down chemical formula. chemical form. This data I have taken from, you know, uh, different, different books. NCRT also I have, you know, referred for this. So all those examples which are given in NCRT, that is also important here. So the first one is, you see, the first one is ginseng. Ginseng, you should know the molecular formula. Its molecular formula is ZNO. Correct. The second one is Fe2O3. Fe2O3 the name is, I'll write down the name first, wait. It is hematite. It is hematite Fe2O3. Okay. Magnetite. Magnetite is Fe3O4. Okay, next is pyrolusite. Pyrolusite mineral, you must be you know, remembering this. We use this for the preparation of KMNO4, right? MNO2. Next is cassiterite, C A double S E T E R I T E, cassiterite. It is SNO2. We also call it as tin stone. Tin stone. Copy this down. I'll go to the next page. Let me know once you're done. Okay. When oxides of uranium, that is, uh, we call it as pitch blend. Formula is U3O8. Bauxite. Bauxite is Al2O3. 
dot three H two O. Okay, galena. There was many times this galena. Galena is lead sulfide, PBS. Cinnabar also there was in the exam. Cinnabar is sulfide of mercury, HgS. One second, Shridhar, you can copy this down. I'll go back again. Okay, numbering here and there will not affect much. Okay, just you copy this down. I'll go back after this. Okay. Okay, Cinnabar is HgS. Fool's gold. This also they have asked in the exam. Fool's gold. Generally, this kind of question there is CT bit set and all. Fool's gold is iron pyrite, FeS two. Argentite is Ag two S. Like all these are sulfides basically. Okay, ZnS. Also, they have asked many times. Zinc blend we call it as. Zinc blend is Z in this. Okay, copper pyrite is Cu FeS two. Copper pyrite. Chalco pyrite also we call it as. Copy this down. Chalco pyrite. Okay, Siddharth, copy this down. Don't see that. Okay, finished. All of you done. Okay, few more compounds we have here. The next one is Indian salt pitter. Is KNO three? Chilli salt pitter. Is any NO three? AgCl. Like I'll write down the name first. Horn silver. Many times they have asked this question. Horn silver. Horn silver is AgCl. Okay. Cryolite. Cryolite is Na three AlF six cryolite. Okay, fluor spar. That is CaF two. Sylvine, sylvine also they have asked in the exam. Sylvine is KCl. 
okay magnesite not much important this one but this is a known compound to you it is mgco3 magnesite okay dolomite important this one dolomite dolomite is caco3 it is an addition compound of calcium and magnesium carbonate siderite siderite is feco3 and the last one we have is calamine calamine also they have asked in the exam calamine is zncio3 zinc carbonate so i have written so many in all these compounds you see this is important this is important like the one which they have asked many times okay cryolite also they have asked hornsill also they have asked okay these two also they have asked here so this last slide is the most important one done okay so these are the few things that you need to memorize next is uh the one that is you no know, for this chapter we have is to understand the process of extraction okay to understand the process of extraction this is what the entire chapter is all about okay so like i said we will first discuss the general process of extraction what are the methods we have in this involved in this and based on the property of the impurities and uh, and metals we use one of those methods for the extraction process so overall the the you know the map of extraction is what you see we have an ore first right so we have first of all we'll choose the ore from this ore we'll do the concentration of ore and this concentration term has nothing to do with the concentration molarity molality or not concentration of ore means we also call it as ore dressing okay so basically we prepare ore for the further processes of extraction okay that we call it as concentration of ore so next step is the concentration of ore concentration of ore we also call it as partly concentrated ore because obviously in one step you cannot remove the entire impurities correct so step by step we'll do right we use different different reaction we mix different different compounds so that we can remove the impurities from that okay the same process here i'll just change the color and write down here the same process we also call it as ore dressing or dressing once you are done with it you will get what you will get concentrated ore right from this step second step next you will get the concentrated ore correct so this is the concentrated ore we have you will get the concentrated ore with this concentrated or i'll write on steps also involved over here we further get impure metal impure metal okay and then we'll apply some methods into this then we'll get the pure metal in the last which is our objective here 
right? So after this, we'll get the pure metal. Okay. So basically the method that we use here, we use different, different methods in the first step. Okay. Um, I cannot write down the entire process over here, but overall the thing is this only. We can use here in this step after taking ore, we can use flotation. We can use flotation method where we use the, you know, the grinded ore will put into the solution and we mix it properly so that the froth forms, right? Which we can take it out. Like it, it, it is, you know, we use this method when we have the difference in density between the impurities and the ore. Don't write it down, just listen to me because one by one we'll discuss all these steps. Okay, where I'll write down, I'll tell you that what is the condition we have to use this particular methods, okay? So flotation is one of the method. Another method is hand picking. Suppose you have this sample, right? Let me just write it down where we have, you know, uh, suppose this is the actual metal particles we have present here, which obviously mix, it's not like it is separated. In this also we have mixing of metals, right? So this is the ore particles mixes with some impurities. And apart from this, there are others, you know, uh, impurities also present like this, suppose, which you can easily identify uh, with the naked eye, right? Like this, suppose unwanted or impurities are present over here, unwanted particles, or impurities are present, which you can easily hand pick, right? We can look at it and you can remove it through hand only, right? Manually, you can do this, right? By physical methods. So hand picking is also one of the process in the concentration of ore, like right? all those impurities, which you can see, observe, right? You can hand pick those particles. That is one part of concentration, okay? So hand picking is one of the method. We have hydraulic wash also, gravity separation method we have over here, right? We have froth flotation also we have over here, right? We have electromagnetic separation when the metals are impure, are you know present over there, which contains magnetic properties and impurities does not show any magnetic properties. So in that case, we can use magnetic separation, which we also call it as electromagnetic separation, right? All these processes we can use. Once the concentrated ore you get, okay, after concentration is done, concentrated ore you get, then we use to, uh, you know, reduce, because usually we get here oxides of metals, which we can reduce and we can remove oxygen and we'll get impure metals over here, which we can do for purification. So what are the different steps we have that we are going to discuss now? Always keep that in mind, concentration of ore has nothing to do with the concentration term that we have done so far, right? It only and only means that we need to prepare ore for the further processes, right? Which we call it as concentrated ore, correct? So this is the entire, the flow map of extraction processes. Now we are going to discuss one by one, what are these steps? What are the processes involved in these steps? And what is the property, required property for metal and impurities we have, okay? So first step you write down. The first step is, is grinding, grinding and pulverizing. grinding and pulverizing. I'll tell you the you know, method, what we have all these methods. See, what happens in this, the ore that we get from earth crust, generally these ores are present in the form of big lumps. Okay, because uh, it is the, you know, it is present in the combined state. No? So it is possible that the ores are present in a big lump size is big over there, okay? So what we do, first of all, we take all these, you know, ore particles, the lumps that we have, 
and we break down this into small pieces. First of all, right? We break down this into small pieces, right? And this we use in crushers or grinders. So this process, we call it as grinding process. Understood? To break down the uh, oats, which is present as a big lump into small pieces is grinding, which we usually done in crusher or grinders. Okay. What is pulverizing? Pulverizing is even one step, you know, further you need to go. Not small pieces. You need to, you know, convert this into powder form, right? Fine powder form, which we used to do in ball mill. Okay. Ball mill is the name of the a device or we can say the machine that we use for the process of pulverizing okay if you study mechanical or chemical engineering you will be dealing with all these you know machines in the lab in your uh, engineering college right like i said ball mill you have you have you know crushers you have all these uh, civil engineering also we have these kind of application so grinding right down in this quickly right oats obtained from the earth crust I'll also write down one second. From the earth crushed. is generally occurred is generally occur in the form of in the form of big lumps Next line, grinding is the process. Grinding is the process we used to, we used to Is the process we use to convert or not convert, convert you don't right? Use to break down, break down the ores into ores into small pieces. small pieces and for this what we use we use grinders we use crushers the machine that we use here is grinders grinders we can use we can use crushers for this process okay grinders or crushers not important this you don't have to memorize okay Next line, write down in pulverizing. Write down next. In <clears throat> in pulverizing. The small pieces. small pieces are reduced to reduced to fine powder are reduced to fine powder with the help of with the help of ball mill Ball mill, like I said, again, a 
you know device we have the machine that we use for reduce the size of the particles so first of all we took the we take the uh, uh, oats the big lump then we we break this down into small pieces or fine powder so this is what we have in grinding and pulverizing the first step is this see any process uh, venkat if you see any process that is required uh, first of all a small pieces a uh, small size will have large surface area right so we can have better interaction with other reagents right if some reaction is to take place or if you want to prepare a solution right suppose froth flotation process you have right where that, that we use when we have difference in density between the metal and the impurities so what happens when you mix this powder into the solution right it forms froth we continuously mix this so it forms froth right so heavier density substance that settles down and lighter densities that that will be at the surface with the froth which we can easily filter out are you getting my point got it so if you don't don't break down into small pieces you won't be able to prepare the solution out of it it won't mix properly oh okay sir okay for better reaction happening yes better reaction you can say or to prepare a solution for other processes for the steps you need to you know reduce the size of the old particles that you are getting oh okay sir correct so yes. this is the uh, first step that is grinding and pulverizing one second shashank grinding uh with the help of the it is a ball mill ball mill is the machine that we use reduce to the fine powder with the help of the ball mill ball mill is the machine right correct now this is the first step which is done grinding and pulverizing we are done with it next step is the concentration of ore concentration of ore which we also call it as ore dressing so it's it's kind of will dress up ore for the further processes right correct so it's like you know uh in in this process what happens all those impurities which can which we can remove easily without any chemical reactions like i took the example few minutes back of hand picking those kind of process takes place into this okay or some physical you know processes like we have hydraulic washing okay gravity which is also known as gravity separation method okay we use in this process so concentration of ore write down write down the metallic ores i'll also write down the wise you'll get confused copy this down the metallic ores ores obtained from obtained from earth crust are often mixed with mixed with non metallic non metallic and and rocky materials rocky and rocky materials rocky materials such as such as we have uh, sand clay etc so we'll mix all this sand clay 
right? Lime is stone. So metallic ores obtained from earth crust are often mixed with non-metallic and rocky materials that is sand, clay, limestone, etc. Right. Correct. We mix this and then we'll allow this mixture with ore and this, uh, you know, the, um, the non-metallic and rocky material that we add. We allow this to pass through a, you know, gravity separation process. We have hydraulic, you know, uh, classifier there as machine, we call it a hydraulic classifier from which we allow this mixture to pass through. And then we'll see what happens in this. I'll show you the diagram also over here. But in this first few one, two points, again, you write down here. Uh, we know the impurities present in the metallic ores are called gang. We also call it as matrix, okay? Gang or matrix are the same thing. Both are impurities. I'll just write down here. Gang and matrix. So both are impurities. Gang or matrix, both are impurities, okay? Write down the concentrated ore The concentrated ore, which is also you know, relatively purified, the concentrated ore is called concentrate. Okay. The concentrated ore is called concentrate. Right. This process concentration of ore this process, we also call it as benefaction process. Just we have different, different names. Purpose is say B-E-N-E-F-A-C-T-I-O-N, benefaction process. Okay. Concentration of ore is called benefaction process. Now, what we do for the concentration of ore, what we do for the benefaction of processes, correct? A benefaction process. The first method, like I said, under this concentration, we can do hand picking. Okay, I'm not dictating you anything into this. You already understood what is the meaning of hand picking we have. So we can do hand picking. We can also do a hydraulic washing. Hydraulic washing. Right? which is nothing but the gravity separation method. Gravity separation method. Copy this down. One second, sir. Okay, so hydraulic washing or gravity separation methods when we use, what is the condition we have to use this method? Okay, so we'll use this method when there is a difference in specific gravity. Condition is what? The condition is we have difference in difference in specific gravity between gang and ore. We must have difference in a specific gravity between the gang and ore. If you have, you know, difference in these two things, gang and ore, then we can use this method that is hydraulic washing or gravity separation method for the concentration of ore. Okay. So based on the property, we use this. Copy this down.
Okay. Now, under this hydraulic washing or gravity separation, we also have different, different methods again. Okay. So under this, you write down, we have two processes, two methods we have. So first one, you write down A, that is Wilfley table method. Wilfley table method. Correct. Now I'll show you the diagram of it, the picture, how it we use this particular thing. See this. This is the Wilfley table. Okay. So the powdered ore that you have, concentrated ore. See, you will understand the process easily here. These are the plates, you can say tray we have on which we'll put this powdered ore over here. We have an inlet of water pipe, which is sprinkles over here on this tray. And then it comes down onto this table, this table. This is the vibrating table we have. We have some arrangement so that we can shake or vibrate this table continuously. It continuously keeps on vibrating, okay? So what happens? The concentrated ore, the ore that we have, since we have difference in uh, specific gravity, so all the concentrated ore, ore they will you know, uh, shift towards the uh, right, right of the table or our left towards this side. And slowly it comes down from here to this side and it will accumulate somewhere over here. And the gang or the impurities, it will come along with the water and it falls down over here. This is what the gang and there are the slits we have. Slits we use to separate the, you know, uh, the ore and the impurities present into this metals and the impurities present into it. So whatever, uh, you know, uh, compounds, elements in which there is a difference in gravity that will be separated by this method like this. Okay, you understood? So I'm not going to dictate you the theory in this. I hope you can understand with the figure how this process we use. Correct? Just a second, I'm coming. I'll take some water. One second. Yeah. One second, guys.
yeah so this is wilfle table method we are doing this under concentration of ore okay keep that in mind under concentration of ore we have hydraulic washing gravity separation method under which we are doing this wilfle table method we have second method in this okay both we can use when we have difference in specific gravity the, on this particular information they ask question in the exam sometimes okay so if there is difference in gravity of specific gravity of you know um, of uh, gang and metal we have then what which method will use so name you just keep in mind another one is hydraulic classifier method okay the b is hydraulic classifier method okay hydraulic classifier method look at this you know diagram hydraulic classifier is this try to understand the working that is it you don't if you understand this uh, obviously in board the chapter is not there or je may and in other exam they won't ask you to you know write down the entire process how it happens okay so these things are not important as far as exam, as the exam is concerned okay so what we do here we have a hopper correct from which we we put the powdered ore into this entire system correct and from the bottom we you know there is an inlet of water here we produce water from this high force of water will be there so here it get mix suspension forms over here suspension of ore okay and we keep on you know blowing water into this right so slowly the metal particles right the concentrated ore since it has higher density it will settle down slowly comes back into this container and we collect it from this outlet the gang particles which are what lighter because we have difference in gravity especially gravity so it will be on the top mostly so some part of it will come out from this outlet which is the gang particle we have okay understood this so this is the conical reservoir fitted with a hopper right it is a hopper conical reservoir is this fitted with a hopper we used to when if like you know there's no point of discussing all these things because you are not going to get this in the school exam but yes the method is this only understood so working you just keep in mind how it works if they frame some questions in the exam any exam comparative exam then you can answer it properly okay condition is same difference in specific gravity will be there the lighter gang particles are carried away by the current of water and heavier ore particles collect at the apex of the cone the term that we use okay apex of the cone the term that we use gang particles are lighter will collect it from the top from here okay okay one more thing based on the design of this uh, vessel the classifier that you have it is in the conical shape here you see it is a conical shape that you have obviously the bottom is not circular but with this narrow part that we have here what it does actually it you know it reduces the velocity of water the water that you are you know pushing in the high current of water from the bottom so because of this you know narrow portion of the tube that we have the velocity of the water decreases and because of that the metal particle which is here which is heavier right it does not carry away if the velocity is very high it is possible that it will push the metal particles also in upward direction but two things because of this narrow part here, over here the velocity of water decreases right and the metal particles which is already heavier because of difference in specific gravity 
So this reduce in velocity of water plus the heavier metal particles, both, you know, uh, you know, both what we can say, uh, the metal particles that you have, it slowly settles down and comes over here. But this current is sufficient enough to blow this, you know, the lighter gang particles that we have, which first of all comes over here and we accumulate from this. So that is what the construction part that we have. Why we have this conical shape? Because it reduces the current of water and helps settling down, helps in settling down, uh, settlement of the metal particles over here in this tank. Correct? This is the purpose we have over here. So this is the, uh, you know, two methods we have in hydraulic washing or gravity separation method. All these things, again, we are discussing under concentration of ore. The next method we have in concentration of ore, the third method, third method is, write down all of you. The third method is electromagnetic separation method. electromagnetic separation method. I'll first show you the diagram for this and then we'll see uh, the important points in this, we'll write it down. Okay, electromagnetic separation. With diagram itself, you understand that what kind of uh, property is required for this kind of processes, okay? So electromagnetic separation, you see this. Okay, so we have a roller over here and a hopper. Right, just above the roller, we have a hopper. And this is the belt we have. This is a magnetic roller and we have a belt over here, correct? The finely, you know, powdered ore, we put this into this hopper and this roller is continuously moving. Like it is moving in this direction, it is moving in this direction, so obviously, the ore particles which comes over here, it starts traveling like this and it goes still here. The one which is, you know, uh, which is, which has the magnetic properties, right? It will be in touch with the roller for a longer period of time and it will fall somewhere here, right? All those, you know, uh, non-magnetic particles, it will lose the contact somewhere over here because it is rolling like this that it will lose the contact somewhere over here. And since the particle has a tangential velocity over here, so it will fall down somewhere here. Means you get, you'll get the two different you know, points where the magnetic particles and non-magnetic particles will come. And hence we can separate the two here, correct? So obviously this kind of separation method we use when there is difference in the magnetic property of the metal and the impurities which is present. Correct? Easier one, you can understand this here. Just few points you write down here. This method is based on, this method is based on, this method is based on magnetic and non-magnetic properties of ore magnetic and non-magnetic properties of ore and the gang respectively magnetic and non-magnetic property of ore and gang respectively so ore is magnetic over here you see the magnetic particle is the ore This is ore, wait. This is ore and this one is gang. So like this, the gang and the ore particles are separated by electromagnetic separation method, okay? <clears throat>
one last point you write down here this method can be used to separate this method can be used to separate chromite ore chromite ore is this used to separate chromite ore that is fe cro2 chromite ore from from silicon impurities like silicious we also call it as from silicious impurities okay so this is the third step we have under third method we have under concentration of ore electromagnetic separation okay i have written it twice magnetic over here it is electromagnetic separation method okay next method we have in this in concentration of ore the fourth one you write down the fourth one we have is froth flotation method froth flotation froth flotation write down in this first this method is used or this method is based on is based on on different wetting characteristics wetting characteristics waiting characteristics of ore of ore and gang by oil and water different waiting characteristics we have by oil and water write down ore is mainly wetted by oil ore is mainly wetted by oil and gang is mainly wetted by water okay next line this method is used this method is used for the separation of sulfide ores mainly i'll write down here sulfide ores for example we can have pbs what is the name of this sulfide i've given it now cufes2 copper pyrite okay zns is zinc blend pbs is galena okay must remember this name important this is galena this is zinc blend this is copper pyrite okay must remember this okay mainly for sulfide ores this information on this information they have asked question in the exam 
okay froth flotation we use for sulfide ores mainly okay so what we do in this process write down a suspension of a suspension of a suspension of finely powdered ore with water is made right a suspension of finely powdered ore with or with water is made this is called slurry okay so in, in just in notation i'll write down we have that finely powdered ore powdered ore we add water in it and this suspension or the mixture that we have we call it as slurry s l u r r y slurry in this slurry we also add some uh, uh some what we get, what we say some froth um some stabilizers we add into this okay so in this study we add various stabilizers which we call it as additives right so in this one i'll just in notation i'll write down like this in this study we add froth stabilizers which helps in the forming of froth froth stabilizers we also add some amount of uh, collectors in this slurry collectors one second some amount of collectors in this slurry so froth stabilizers what all compounds we use for this this one is important this you must keep in mind for stabilizing froth we use compounds like aniline aniline we use cresol etc as froth stabilizers important right collectors mainly we use the salt of ethyl xanthate one example is sodium ethyl xanthate sodium ethyl xanthate we use as collectors the formula you see for sodium ethyl xanthate we have this uh sodium ethyl xanthate we have ch3 ch2 it is ethyl o c double bond s instead of o we have s here s minus na plus this is sodium ethyl xanthate i'll show you the diagram also for this the picture that we have right so what we use as the froth stabilizers you also copy down like this only okay in notation because if you're going to write on line by line it will take a lot of time froth stabilizers is this we use an example and lean and cresol we have apart from this in order to form froth okay in a good amount of froth in order to form we also add some oil into this which we call it as pine oil okay so we add which we we call it as frothing agents okay which can form froth okay so it is a frothing agent we have mainly we use pine oil for this purpose we don't have much example only this must you need to memorize so pine oil we add in order to form good amount of froth to stabilize froth we add aniline cresol and we use some collector that is sodium ethyl xanthate fatty acids also we can use as collectors okay so this uh, you know a collectors that we have it you know it enhance the non weighting ability of mineral particles in presence of collector 
uh, correctors, a uh, wetting ability uh, decreases for mineral particles. Correct. So this is the few things we add into this one small point. Again, you write down. Write down in this suspension, one more additive, one more additive additive which is known as which is known as activators or depressant two terms we have here right down here we can use activator activators or depressant activator or depressant is added right activator or depressant is added in order to use this method for non sulfide ore also right so activator is what activator is the compound which improves the floating characteristics and is opposite of activator is depressant okay activators improves the floating characteristics of ore improves the floating characteristics of ore and the one which reduces the floating characteristics is depressant reduces the floating characteristics depressant okay example of activator one example we have right down it is lead sulfate pbso4 lead sulfate here we have nacn kcn nacn kcn we can write Okay, look at the diagram for this, the figure that we have. We have froth flotation, this. Okay, so we have this pedal here, which we can rotate in order to form the froth, because everything, if you make simple, when in water, if you add detergent, right, you have to mix it properly so that the froth forms, correct? Same thing we have here. We have an arrangement of mixing the mixture over here. Paddle we rotate. This is the blade we have and hence the mixture, you know, mix properly and forms froth. If froth is not forming, we'll add pine oil in order to get more amount of froth, right? To serve the purpose, right? So. Or we have an inlet over here to put ore into this and oil, and then we'll mix it, we'll form ore, we'll form this froth, which we can take it out or filter it out. Okay, air also we mix over from this point. We have an arrangement of blow air also into this mixture. 
in order to form froth again. Okay, the same purpose we have here. Mineral froth, we can filter it out from this and we'll get the uh, concentrated ore over here. This is the arrangement of froth flotation. Okay, so this method we have, till now we discussed this under concentration of ore. So we discussed hand picking, we discussed hydraulic washing. In that we discussed two methods which is Wilflay table method and hydraulic classifier. Okay, these two methods we discuss. And then the third method we discuss in this electromagnetic separation, magnetic and non-magnetic property. We have that roller doll example, you must have seen that. And then the fourth one we have that is froth flotation process. So four different methods we use for the concentration of ore, right? Now, when the concentration is done, concentration of ore is done, you get the concentrated ore. Then we have the next method, which we call it as leaching. One second. Okay. So once we get the concentration concentrated ore, we have the next step for the purification. And that is the third term we have, the third step we have, that is leaching. Leaching, we also call it as hydrometallurgy. Hydrometallurgy or leaching, both are the same thing. Okay. Write down, it involves, I'll write down it. Leaching, write down. It involves the treatment of It involves the treatment of finely powdered ore finely powdered ore with a suitable reagent with a suitable reagent like acid base any reagent we can use we can use acid base any other chemical reagent we can use write down acid we can use for this purpose base or other reagents chemical reagents we can use for this purpose okay and we choose this reagent in such a way, in such a way that this reagent can dissolve ore, but not the gang or impurities. Okay. So it involves the treatment of finely powdered ore with a suitable reagent, which can dissolve which can dissolve um, what? Ore but not the gang. This is the condition we have. Okay, write down the metal. The metal can be obtained after this when we dissolve this reagent, we'll get the salt of metal from which it can be obtained by different methods like electrolysis and other things, right? The metal can obtain by, obtain from its salt, from its salt by electrolysis.
Okay. I will give you one example here for leaching method. Only one example we'll discuss. Like suppose we are having the leaching of uh, leaching of bauxite ore. Okay. Bauxite ore. We call it as Bayer's process. This name is also important. Okay, Bayer's process. So in bauxite ore, first of all, what happens, you have to keep this in mind, that pure alumina obtained from the bauxite ore. Right, in Bayer's process, in Bayer's process, pure alumina, that is Al2O3. Obtained from 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 the bauxite ore okay pure alumina obtained from the bauxite ore okay generally what happens in bauxite the impurities present are we have iron oxide like Fe2O3, these are the impurities present in bauxite. We have silica, SiO2, the impurities present, and titanium oxide, TiO2. Now, these are the facts. You know, you cannot do anything into it. Like what impurities are present that you have to memorize. Okay. So in, in bauxites, all these impurities we have. Right. Now this solution is mixed with the NaOH solution. 40% NaOH solution we mix into this. That is the base we are using. Suitable reagent, you no? Know? Reagent is NaOH over here, right? Now this NaOH, when added into this, so Al2O3 dissolves and convert into sodium meta aluminate. That is, that is the you know complex compound of aluminum. I'll write down the formula here. And other impurities are left behind. Right. So first of all, this NaOH, I'll write down the reaction here. We have the solution of Al2O3, the bauxite ore, and all those impurities present into this. When you are added with uh, you add this NaOH solution into this. This is solid. This is aqueous. Right. And obviously water we have here. So it converts into 2Na AlOH 2Na AlOH4 aqueous. This is a product we get. Right. Which in this is sodium meta aluminate. Sodium meta aluminate, which further on, uh, you know, electrolysis, it converts into the next reaction we have Al2O3 solid plus the base we have OH minus in presence of H2O. This is the ionic form I am writing it down. This is the molecular form. Ionic reaction is this, which is AlOH4 minus anyone you can write. Okay, aqueous. Sir, could you please go back to the previous slide? Yeah. Okay. I'll go. After we'll continue this. this. Sorry? After this, sir. After this. Ah, okay. So we get this, right? Um, sodium meta aluminate. Now, this solution of sodium meta aluminate is filtered, and the filter is cooled. Filter is cooled down, and at a certain pH, Right, it is neutralized with carbon dioxide and aluminum hydroxide precipitated out here.
okay this aluminium hydroxide if i write down the reaction here aloh4 negative charge in is diluted with co2 it converts into al oh 3 so co2 is circulated here right it does not take part in the reaction oh minus ion forms okay and then this al oh whole thrice we heat this at high temperature more than 1000 around 1500 kelvin then it converts into solid alumina al2o3 solid and h2o goes out in this reaction so this is the leaching process we have we add base we get the salt of it this salt you know it is circulated with carbon dioxide forms hydroxide here aloh whole thrice which on heating converts into alumina similarly we can have extraction of copper and other things also but everything is we don't have to do all this and even this one is also not that important sometimes they have asked questions on alumina that's why i have taken this example okay i'll go back just copy this down Done, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we have done this. Uh, concentration is done, and then we have leaching. Okay. When leaching is done, so in leaching we mainly get. mainly we get oxides of metal you see we are getting alumina oxides of metal now from this metal oxides you need to take metal you need to extract metal so what we do you you have to remove oxygen from this correct so next step is the reduction of the of the concentrated ore after leaching we'll do the reduction and reduction also we can do in two different way okay both we'll discuss over here so next step after leaching we have calcination calcination is uh, sorry leaching we have done after this thing um concentration of ore we have leaching after leaching we have reduction of the concentrated ore reduction of of concentrated ore okay write down metals are usually present metals are usually present as hydroxides means you have metal hydroxides or you have uh, carbonates carbonates or sulfides mainly sulfides etc okay
okay so what we do if all these hydroxides carbonates sulfides we have so first we need to convert this hydroxide sulfides and carbonates into oxides right so from metal hydroxide we convert this into metal oxide metal carbonates converts into metal oxides metal sulfides converts into metal oxides why because we need to extract metal so it is always easier to extract metal from metal oxides right then all other compounds due to the thermodynamic reason okay uh, it is you know easily uh, like feasibility of the reaction is uh, is easier in comparison to the other carbonates sulfides or hydroxides that we have correct so one point you add in the last over here um write down to extract metal from its compounds compounds means what i'm not giving you all the three words compounds means hydroxides carbonates and sulfides okay to extract metal from its compounds it first the compound first converted into the metal oxides okay so this metal hydroxide sorry metal uh, compounds are converted into metal oxides because are converted into metal oxides because extraction of metal because extraction of metal is easier is easier from uh is relatively easier right down extraction of metal is relatively easier from its oxides from its oxides due to thermodynamic reason due to thermodynamic reason now how do we convert metal into metal hydro sorry metal oxide okay all these hydroxides carbonates sulfides we have how do you convert this into oxide so for that we have two methods one is we'll discuss under this one is calcination the first method in this a we have calcination write down cal it is the process in which it is the process in which the ore is heated strongly it is the process in which the ore is heated strongly the ore is is heated strongly in absence or limited supply of air important this point is okay or is heated strongly in absence or limited supply of air that is calcination okay there was question on this information okay limited supply of air at a temperature at a temperature at a temperature comma lower than the melting point of the metal means the temperature should not be more than the melting point because but in that case the metal also will be melt, will get melt right so temperature must be lower than the melting point and will heat strongly 
okay, in absence or limited supply of air. So for example, you see this reaction, if you have uh, this compound, hydroxide of iron, FeOH whole thrice, when you heat this, you will get Fe2O3 oxide of metal and H2O will go out. How much 3 H2? Right? Hydrated or if you have, so for example, you see bauxite or Al2O3 dot 2H2O. We again heat this strongly. It converts into Al2O3 and H2O. Okay. If you have carbonates like CaCO3, we get CaO plus CO2, calcium oxide we get, CO2. CaO we can also obtain from dolomite. CaCO3 dot MgCO3, important this reaction is, when you heat this, you'll get CaO plus MgO, magnesium oxide, and two molecules of CO2. So when you heat this in absence of air, we'll get the oxide of metal. So calcination is this. Okay, now the next second process in this reduction of concentrated ore, one way is calcination, other one is roasting. Other one is roasting. In this, the ore is heated strongly is heated strongly in presence of air. So previous one, absence. This one is presence of air. Again, at a temperature below the melting point. Excuse me. <clears throat> then, so in this method, what happens? You see, all the sulfide ore will be converted into the oxide of metal. Okay, and that is what the purpose we have. So, the reaction is: suppose we have HgS. This is the reaction we have. Cu2S plus O2 gives a Cu2O 2SO2. ZNS plus balanced reaction, I'll write down. 3O2 gives Two SO two. By this method, we can also remove. Write down by this method, we can also remove. I'll write a bit.
we can also remove non metallic impurities non metallic impurities like like arsenic antimony sulfur phosphorus etc all these non metallic impurities we can remove so how it happens all these uh, you know non metallic impurities converts into oxide and escapes volatile gas it forms so look at this reaction 4 as arsenic plus 3o2 it forms 2 as 2o3 volatile gas it escapes into the atmosphere sulfur and oxygen forms so2 escapes in the atmosphere okay phosphorus o2 converts into p4 o10 escapes in the atmosphere on last point it can also remove it can also remove water from from hydrated ores hydrated ores these are the uses we have for this method that is roasting done